were you when you fell in love with nature? Where were you when you really completely, deeply, head over heels, all in, obsessively <laughs> fell for nature? Were you walking in the forest? Were you near water, by a river or a lake, under a waterfall? Were you looking into the eyes of an animal in the wild and feeling its energy and your own connect? Were you looking at the sky through leaves and listening to the sound of wind? Were you walking along our coast, along the cliffs, looking out at the ocean? Were you on the bow of a boat with the dolphins, perhaps? Or were you completely immersed on the bottom of the sea, quietly with your thoughts and with the animals around you? I remember where I was. I was in Wyoming, in the snowy range near Deep Lake. I can feel the grass between my toes still from that day. And I can smell the air. I can hear the wolves howling at night still. And I can taste the trout that we caught in the lake. But back then, I was really in love with turtles. And I don't have a photo of myself <laughs> with a turtle. <laughs> Unfortunately, I really wish I did, but I don't. It must have looked something like that. More or less. The thing was that as a kid, I can't really explain why, but I love turtles. I love to check them out. I love to catch them and release them. And I dreamed about turtles. Now, that sounds a little weird. But I was obsessed with turtles. To the point where I see turtles <laughs> everywhere. I even see a few turtle-y folks out here in the audience. There's always... A couple. I don't mean to embarrass you. You know who you are. <laughs> but I turned that passion for turtles and that obsession for turtles into a career as a marine biologist. I told my family and my friends that I was going to be a turtle guy, and I got my PhD. And guess what? I met turtle guys and gals all over the world who felt the same way. Turtle Geeks Unite, and we've been working together to bring sea turtles back from the edge of extinction around the world. And the thing that drives that, as a scientist, the thing that drives that is that passion, that unbridled passion, that connection that we all share with nature. And I used to try to talk about that as a scientist, and I would get pushback from my graduate school committee members, from colleagues, and they'd say, you know, that touchy-feely stuff, kind of soft, isn't it? No, it's not. Those feelings, that emotional connection to nature, that is my science. That is what will get us out of this jam that we're in. That is what will save sea turtles. And the science is now catching up. We're beginning to understand that as we go deeper into that emotion, that feeling of awe, that feeling of connection, that is our science. Now, we used to understand the human brain as a black box. Didn't know what was going on inside. We could poke and prod and see what happened, but essentially, it was a black box. Now we can look inside. Now we can see what's going on in our brains. We are living at a time that is the golden age of neuroscience. It's an incredible time to be thinking about the human brain. Through technology like functional MRIs and EEGs, we can map brain activity. 
We can see what's going on when we're in motion and at rest and in a variety of circumstances. We have a deeper understanding of neurochemistry, chemicals like oxytocin that are well known as having an important role in connecting us to each other, connecting us to our world. People love oxytocin. <laughs> people really love oxytocin. <laughs> and there are people running around in part of my tribe who put tattoos of turtles on their backs, and there are people who put oxytocin <laughs> on their backs. There's a connection there. This generation is the first generation with a user's guide to the human brain. And the question is, how will we use it? What will we do with it? Ecologists understand our world through terms like trophic cascades, where bringing back predators completely adjusts an entire system to the point of cleaning up our waters. Fixing the predators has a, does a cascade through the ecosystem, and it cleans up our waters. And we're beginning to value the services provided from our ecosystems. And these are important concepts. But what I offer is, let's go further. Let's talk about neurologic cascades. Let's take it a step further. Because when we fix the predators, they fix the prey. That cleans up the water. Then what? We can connect with that water. And the emotional services that that healthy ocean, that that healthy river, that that forest offers to us is a feedback loop and brings us back more deeply into that connection with nature. See where I'm going? Now, out there, when we're in nature, relaxing, our brains are different. We shift, and that's important. Nature brings us deeper into ourselves, connects us more to it and our planet and each other. I call this field neuroconservation. Now, neuroscience is being applied to a variety of things, like neuromarketing, neuropoliticking. Neuroscience is even helping us spend more time productively in our offices. Why not apply neuroscience to fixing nature? Let's do that. Let's lean in to that connection. Nature is medicine. This is an ancient idea that is now reiterated through modern science. A walk on the beach, a surf session, a stroll through the woods heals us. It fixes what's broken inside of us. Nature can reduce our stress. It can make us more creative. It can bring us together. And it does all of that with the minimum amount of side effects. <laughs> and it's pretty cost effective, too. Now, this is a friend of mine named Chewy Lucero. And Chewy grew up hunting and eating sea turtles in Mexico. We began working together, and Chewy met a baby sea turtle for the first time. And releasing that baby sea turtle into the ocean changed him. He said, how have I gotten to be of this age without knowing about these animals in that stage? How can I help bring them back? I've been part of driving them to extinction. How can I help bring them back? And I've been working with Chewy for 20 years. He's a hero and a very good friend. And he was transformed through the act of spending time with nature. I believe that soon, neuroscientists will tell us that being in the presence of nature lights up our brains the same way as the faces of those we love. When we come back from being away and we see the ones we love, we feel something similar to the way we feel when we're in nature. And that's important to understand. When we step outside, nose to nose, eye to eye, fully immersed in the wild, we are the best versions of ourselves. We are the best versions of ourselves. My friend Alexei Murdoch 
the Scottish musician, wrote, Remember when you were only a child. Remember when you were only a child. Start to see with your blue mind. Start to see with your blue mind. And don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of what you find. Now, if you've been given a blue marble, I want you to take a hold of that and hold it up. This is what we look like from one million miles away. You'll notice that we are small and we are blue. That's because of the water. This is a simple token of gratitude and it's a gift. And I would like you to share it with somebody today and say thank you to them for what they do to put our planet back together. And I want it to be a reminder to go deeper into this medicine that we call nature, that we're so fortunate to have so handy, we call the ocean. Go deeper into it. Be part of your own blue mind. I wish you water. Thank you.